Miss Vivian in the wild. And in Chicago, we elected basket this time, but it's just as full as the cart was yesterday. Look at her, she's pulling her hair out. She doesn't know what to do. I just came back from Chicago and I bought a bunch of wine. I went to Benny's Beverage Depot and then Chicago. Both of these locations have really good wine prices, so if you guys are in the Chicago area, check those out. There were a couple other places that I wanted to go to, but just didn't have any time. So I have 12 bottles and I'll go through each of them. I'm not <laughs> drinking all of these. Some of these I'm like, you probably will see later on, but there are some that I might wait to drink. Please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. This is the Grand Cru. Blanc de Blanc. $40. That's like a pretty good price. This is like a vintage champagne. So they only make those like during nice years. So the first category is sparkling or specifically champagne. I got two champagnes that I'm so excited about. Both of these are grower champagnes and that's where you're gonna get the biggest bargains. Let's start off with the Stefan Coquillet and it's a premier crew. So unlike Burgundy and Bordeaux, Champagne has a ranking system based on the villages the vineyards are in. Each of the villages are ranked one through 100, although the lowest is 80 skewed. Premier Cru is anything 90 to 99 percent. Ooh, I just kicked you. Really cool about Vin Chicago is when you check out, they will send you the winemaker notes, which is so awesome. Now we talked about Premier Cru being 90 to 99, and then I got a Grand Cru champagne, so this is what like 100 and this was only 47 dollars so that's kind of why i got it and also it is a blanc de blanc and blanc de blanc means that it is made out of 100 percent chardonnay so it has really bracing acidity which i really like it says it's non-vintage but with the tasting notes that i got they said that most of the grapes are actually from 2014. i didn't get that many white wines I realized this like when I, afterwards I was like, huh, would you look at that? But I did get a white. Tyler has never tried a Semillon. So I was like, okay, we can get a Semillon. And looks like Chad, Chad likes it. It is a blend of Sauvignon Blanc, Semillon, and Muscadel. And those are three of the main grapes that are found in Bordeaux. Someone asked me to do a video on orange wine. Guess what? I found an orange wine. This was like the only one there at Vin Chicago. So orange wine, they prefer the term amber wine. What they do is they leave the skin of the grapes in contact with the juice longer because normally they don't leave it in. The grape varieties that are in here are Fiano, Zibibo, I've never heard of that before, Moscato Giallo, Gewurztraminer, and Greco. But I thought that was gonna be kind of interesting, so I'm curious to see what it tastes like. And as if you can kind of tell, it is a little murky, and there is some sediment on the bottom, and that's normal. And then the rest are just straight up reds. I'm a huge Spanish red fan, so I got two different Riojas. I got one Reserva Rioja and one Gran Reserva Rioja, and both of them are 2012, which is a pretty decent year. We're in that window of time where it's ready to drink. The difference really between the Reserva and Gran Reserva is that the Gran Reserva has one additional year of barrel aging. Let's go to Italy. The official name is Amarona della... Ugh. Tongue twister. Amarona della Valpolicella. This is like a pretty well-known Italian wine. This is 16% alcohol. 16, just 
let that sink in. Because they're made out of raisinated grapes, it's just like a richer flavor. I, it's just really tasty. This is 2012 and the, like Amarone is just a great wine. This is also one of Italy's most famous grapes. Barbaresco is from the Piedmont area, which is Northern Italy. I am a huge fan of these wines as well. There's a finesse to it. It's really beautiful. Now the rest are French, French reds. So like I said, I like to, I like to explore different wine regions and this one's a new one for me. So Côte de Roussillon, middle south portion of France near the Mediterranean. They're known for their Grenache and their Syrah, and this is a blend of both. Kind of along that same family is Chateau Neuf du Pape. The Southern Rhone is made up of blends of grapes to make their wines. There's 13 or 14 different grapes that they can use, but primarily it's gonna be like Syrah, Grenache, Mouvedre. They always, like on the glass, they always have I don't know what they call this. Like they always have a print of like a crown or like it says Chateau Neuf de Pop. They always have like cool glasses. Then we went to Bordeaux. And the reason why this was cheaper is it's 65% Merlot, 29% Cabernet. And left bank is typically more Cabernet Sauvignon, but I think this would be very tasty, a good bargain. This one for sure I'm probably going to hold. This is a premier crew. Burgundy. So this is like the second level, Grand Cru being the highest. This is a Pinot Noir 2017, which is a pretty decent growing season. Not too wet, not too dry. And this one was $40, which is not too bad for a Premier Cru. So yeah, all in all, it was a really fun wine shopping experience. I went crazy. I probably could have stayed in the store for much longer. Thank goodness I had a time limit and Tyler's like, we need to go. So thank God for that or else I would have spent more money. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys later. Mm -hmm.